together for our good because God loves us. So he's saying, if you know I love you, trust the purpose in which I sent you. All things are working together for the good of those that are... Huh? Huh? Who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So you're not a person to God. You are not a person to God. You are a you are a purpose, and he says, I want to work my specialty through you. I want to work my specialty through you. What is God's specialty? Huh? Love. Love. Love always wants to make you better. My mama beat me when I was a boy because she loved me. She knew I could do what? Better. You ain't my mama. And ain't your daddy. I got no business beating you to make you better. God will discipline us because he loves us to make us better. Anything that don't make you feel better, don't you let it tell you it loves you. And the sad part about it is, when you, when you see somebody going to church on a regular basis and have no compassion, Oh, can y'all are y'all feeling where we're going here? How long, saints? How long are you gonna see me not get mad at you? How long are you gonna see me try to find a solution with you? And y'all gonna do it for each other. Anything that sees lights out in my church and say they love the church. And let the light stay out. And I got bugs back there. You can't tell me you love the church. Because if the light's out, the church don't look better. It looks like we can't afford no bugs. I'm just using a simple analogy. I'm not aiming at nobody. What I'm trying to say is we must understand nothing when it comes to love. Because we always talk about being spiritual. Am I right? Huh? Spirit of what? Spirit of what? Spirit of love. We always talk about the Holy Spirit. Always talking about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I'm going to show you I'm going to show you something today. Men that follow David, love David. But they, when, when, when something happened that they love more than David, they want to kill David. I got this here. They want to kill David. Anytime, anytime, you get to the place where you can't be consistent in the way you treat people. I'm not concerned about growing in God. See, you see him? No. Huh? No, we call him God. Well, she came to church with you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'm all Okay, call me see what's going on. So, let's look at the definition. Let's look at the definition of love. Let's just look it up. Let's just look it up. Because cause I see what's going on. I see what's going on in the spirit of Jesus. We are a spirit-based church, but we don't know what's what the spirit that we're supposed to be operating in 
We said spirit of holiness. Spirit of holiness. Do y'all know what spirit of holiness really mean? Whole in God. Whole in God. Holiness. If you got to tell yourself, I'm, I'm sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, you try to convince you. If you are sanctified and full of the Holy Ghost, you don't need to tell yourself that. If I'm sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost, who should be telling the world that for me? God. God. God said, let me speak for you about the things that are of me. You just live. You just live. Let me speak for you. Something going on. Let me speak for you about the things of God. You just live. Amen? Let me speak for you. Let me speak for you. So now, let's just, let's just look up this word, because the bishop always talking about love. It's an intense feeling of deep infection. Huh? Intense feeling of deep infection. I still can't hear you. Say it again. Intense feeling of deep infection. Intense feeling. Intense feeling. Let's see. An intense feeling of deep affection. A great interest and pleasure in something. The verb, that's the noun. The verb is feel deep affection. Like or enjoy very much. I always ask people, how, how many people feel good when they come to church? They say, oh, everybody, yeah. How many people like feeling good? Huh? So if you like feeling good, why you don't come to church all the time? If you come to church, it makes you feel good. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Well, I'm trying to get y'all to understand something. If we're going to be a spirit-based church, love has to be resurrected out of us. Not some of the time, but when necessary. I should be walking love, but when necessary, it should be res resurrected out of me. Why? When should it be resurrected out of me? When you put me in a cross road. When you put me in a situation where you have crossed me. When circumstances have crossed me. When people have crossed me. Now I need love to be resurrected. I don't need love to be resurrected as long as they loving me. I don't need love to be resurrected as long as things are going the way I want them to go. I'm talking to you like this tonight because if we're going to be a spirit-based church, and when your love becomes pure, it's painful. Because most people around you are not going to be spirit-based. They're gonna be they're gonna be bound by right or wrong. They're gonna be bound by what you did or what you didn't do for them or to them. Not many people don't like you, don't like you because something you didn't do that and you don't even know you didn't do it. <laughs> Anybody ever run across that? Huh? You know how many people stay in relationships because they nobody really talks about love? Love is just like growing up in a house where, where people don't talk about sex. They just, they just say, this is a loving church. I've seen people fight in this church. I've seen people bring guns up and bring guns up in this church at each other. But this is a loving church. Because nobody talks about love. Because nobody really want to love. You know, what we, when it comes to love, you know what we want? Anybody know? Huh? We want to be loved. Because love will give you anything. 
That's why y'all like Bishop. Because he'll give you anything. Because he is, he is love. And I don't, concern, I don't concern myself with what I give you or don't give you. Because love don't count the cost. God don't count the cost. I ain't never did what I did yesterday. Anybody know why I did it? Huh? God led me. God led me. See, this is how life is. If, if I'm doing something for yours, you can see God leading me. If I'm doing something you understand, you can see God leading me. But when I do ain't doing it for yours or something you don't understand, you won't follow me because you you could cut cut cut. It ain't according to what you think is right. Yeah, people use me. You know what I found out? If people can't use you, God can't use you. Nobody wants to be used, but everybody wants to be used by God. Used is used. Anybody hear what I'm saying? So when I found that out, and I found out that, 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 that I would let God use me any kind of way, but I would let anybody use me. Most people don't even get there because they don't become, they don't, they don't know that kind of love. See, to know that kind of love, it hurts. It hurts when you ain't got nothing but genuine love for somebody, and they got agendas walking around in your life. Deacon Richard used to be an agenda person, but now his love, his love is genuine. I don't know about with y'all, but with me, it's genuine now. I don't. I, I said this a long time ago, and I still, I still mean it. I don't like being around people who make me think. What you up to? Is you genuine? Is you trying to get something out? You, you gonna get it? But I bet I I I I I, I pray that you got it with the right spirit because you ain't taking from me, you take it from God. You gonna get it? Show y'all something. Ask me a question, please. Not really. Because God sometimes will let you take something from someone so they'll know they can be a blessing. But if you took it to get over on them, he's going to deal with you. It ain't about whether you needed it or not. Jesus didn't need to die. But he died. He didn't need to die. Jesus could have kept left living, kept teaching. But we would never have gotten the message as strongly that God loves us as if when he died for our sins, so we could live, and then we knew that death had no power because, because we saw him live on the other side of death. And we still talk to him today. That's right. But what we don't understand is love's supposed to always make you feel better. Love don't always give you what you want. But in not giving you what you want, it still has a way of expressing love. Your mama didn't give you always, always give you what you want. But did you ever, did you ever, I, was, I ain't gonna say that, but it's some mamas. But a mother don't always give you what you want, but you never question her what? Love. Now a mama, you might. But a mother, a father, do you know, think about a man going to work. He got five kids. Anybody know what's going on here? Huh? He going to get less out of what he's working for than everybody else. A real father. He don't care. But then you got people who just keep taking. And don't care about how you feel. And that's why you got to drop your feelings. Because people will uh, manipulate you through your what? Yeah, through your feelings. Uh -huh. If 
I truly didn't know God. Look at me. Y'all know what I could be doing tonight? I could be out on my grill, on my bike porch, huh? Getting ready to watch the Monday night football. Y'all see what I'm saying? I live 200 miles away from here. But my love is real because I don't count the cost. This church gets more out of what I work for than I get. When that man, we went to the closing table, and that man said, they tried to, they tried to take out $20,000. And the last day, I asked him the day before, I said, do we need anything else? Do we have everything? Are we ready to close? Yeah, yeah, we can be ready to close. Deposit none of the following. Non not refund. They got twenty thousand dollars. We get to the table. Oh, 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 Bishop. Um, um. There's one more thing. We. I didn't pay it. Who paid it? Love paid it. How do I know love paid it? I never asked for it back. Told that lady just write the check. We got a home. You got a home, and everybody was excited. But now look at the excitement. Oh, pastor, the one put this, the pastor put up seven thousand dollars. She was part of the twenty. What I'm trying to say to you, saints, I want you to hear this: Love never makes you feel worse. My wife, uh, we work together. Sometimes it gets, a, it gets a little intense right now. Sometimes she steps in arenas that she's really not prepared for or don't understand. And she'll say, she apologize. And you know what I tell her? You don't, you don't ever have to apologize to me because I love you. I don't care what kind of arena it is. Love never makes you feel less than or makes you feel worse. And if, and if I catch up feeling that way, I quickly Tell her, baby, no, don't do that. Y'all heard me tell people, don't wake up with Jesus. They get ready. I said, don't do that. Love never makes you feel worse. And if it catch you feeling worse, it ad love addresses it. Why? Because it is compassionate. Y'all don't want compassion. Y'all just want some passion. But when you have compassion, you're, you're hearing God say, come, and when you come to me, I'm going to give you some passion to take back to them that they don't understand because they don't expect it. When you have compassion, that means you went to God, got something that they didn't expect to give them in that moment. Compassion. You know, you know, talk to me. I like what you're saying now. You got to talk up, man. I like what you're saying now because this morning I was talking to you. And I was getting mad with him, right? Yeah. And it seemed like something just came to me and said, who do you wake up for every morning? And I thought about waking up with Jesus. Yeah. And I told him, I said, hey, man. I said, you know something wrong? I said, I like you every night. Just forget, but I love you, man. You know, last week when we were doing this here, part of the church, we had a, whole, we had a lot more people. Part of the church, and been left behind. It's like I had to, I had to do two teachings. I had to teach to the people who, who don't be on wake up with Jesus, and I had to teach to the people who are on wake up with Jesus. Because people on wake up with Jesus, they they already they already know most of the time what I'm gonna say before I say it because they hear it every day. But the ones who ain't on wake up with Jesus, they basically left behind, and they don't understand wake up with Jesus is a part of the ministry. If you want to grow. I don't demand it. But at some point, you got to say, you know what? I, 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 want more, I want as much God as I can get. And God told us, seek my face early in the morning. I'm going to read this to you. And, 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 you know, right now, I am frustrated. That's how frustrated I am. I'm frustrated. I'm not, I'm not mad. 
I'm frustrated because love is so simple. But what, what complicated is these little silly games we play. True love is simple. It is what it is. I love you and here it is on the table. Can anybody relate? Am I just, am I just talking for nothing? No, Bishop, you sure ain't. Who's trying to hear this? It says, this is this is this is this is something talking about love. Love is timely encouragement. Timely encouragement. You know, some people tell you they love you, and because they think they're getting away with something, they'll keep doing it and not realizing that I can't. How can I say it? What we're teaching tonight, anybody that's got any agendas, God for to rip you away from this church. Rip you away from people in this church. Because we're about to enter into a one-on-one a, 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 a -on -one relationship with God. And you can't bring no spirits around that that is not godly. On how much you love them, or how much you want them. Y'all can think of y'all can think I'm just talking and playing, but I'm telling you what the Spirit is telling me, and I ain't no prophet. I don't need all them titles. I'm telling you what the Spirit is telling me. You can start tonight. Noel, Ralph, Elect, Joe, Deacon Joe. Missionary, Deacon Rap, I'm sorry. Missionary, uh, Val Missionary. My sister. Accept what God has done. And said, Lord, you know what? I confess. I don't want to be left behind. We are about to be part of the rapture. Anybody know the rapture? What happened at the rapture? There was, there was one that was there, and they were gone. And then the, there was somebody laying there, and they stayed. You might be here, your body might still be here, but your spirit is about to be taken out of your body. And anybody that is still connected to their body, if you try to hang on to them, God says you don't want me because you love them more than you love me. And you can't even come. I want y'all to hear this. Listen to this. It says life's challenging obstacles can cause us to feel overwhelmed with heartache. What's up, my son? Life overwhelming obstacles can cause us to feel overwhelmed with heartache. There is nothing like your heart being broken over and over again. See, it's one thing for somebody to be operating in the assignment of God. See, when somebody's operating in the assignment of God and, and pain comes, they are still nourishing. But when somebody's not operating in the assignment of God and they bring heartache, they're not, they're not adding nothing to the equation, but they're constantly taken from the equation. I give you all the money I got and give him a car. It don't mean I love you. I can cook for you and put a plate in front of you. It don't mean I love you. I'm just doing this so I can get something greater from you. You should be able to feel somebody's love if they don't do nothing for you if they really love you. But well, all we do is we bargain. I love. I'll do this so you can do that. Oh, women specialize in it. Men and men do too. Y'all know where we go with that? Huh? You ain't paying no bills, you get no nothing. I don't get no nook, I don't pay no bills. Bargain. You don't bargain love, saints. You find out what God says your requirements are, and you love doing them and meeting them. No matter how, how low I had to go for the purpose of God, I fought to meet the requirements of 
of this ministry. I fought to meet the requirements of a husband. I fought to meet the requirements of a good, good church member. I fought. Because love is real. Listen to what happened today. Life's challenge and obstacles can cause us to feel overwhelmed with heartache, sadness, and despair. When you become spiritual, this is why God said you must go through times of suffering because the closer you get to him, the, the more you're going to see love that ain't pure. Love that's fake. And it's hard to take, especially when it's coming from unexpected places. People in church. Stop. Get out of. Y'all know the black man's favorite word? But we do it a lot around this church. Huh? Anybody know? Fissing to. We do a lot of fissing to around here. I got a feel back here. I got a fence. I got a fence back here. I got about seven or eight deacons in the church. And I had to pay a man $200, $245 to take the fence down, to cut the grass out there, to clean the field. But we love the church. How long I asked y'all to take the weeds up? But we fist them to We fist them to We fist them to But y'all love Bishop. Call me and ask me for something. Suppose, suppose I take on a fist or two mentality. Oh, bitch, I got this problem. I'm fist or two, I'm getting it to you. I'm, I'm fist or to give you the money for it. Because you're a fist or two do. Huh? It plans on fixing nothing. That's why I don't do it. That's why I don't say I'm going to do it. That's why I say I'm fist to do it. I will do it tomorrow. Why put off tomorrow what you can do today? We out of church. I say, y'all, I'm tired of weed being over here on the, on the new grass I put over here. And we out of church. Ain't nobody walk over there. When the sign used to be blown down, I had to drive from Orlando and come up, drive up to the church, and put the sign. Ain't nobody making y'all be here. I want you here for one reason. And I don't want you here because you love the church. I don't want you here because you love me. And I'm not fussing at you. I'm trying to convict you. I want you here because you love God. Because I'm telling you, I'm telling you pure love when you are, y'all, right now, I, I, you can't hurt me, but there's a lot of pain going on with me because I, 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 I see the unfaithfulness of, of, of your actions. But guess what? If you, call me, if you call me tomorrow and I got it, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to give it. Why? Because love has no back door. And people used to tell me, and I used to try to practice it. What y'all used to tell me? Bitch, you, you need to learn how to say no. Love don't say no. Love don't say no. But God will come through love and, 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 and God will not do but if God ain't talking to me, I cannot say no. The only way I say no is God said, get out of my, don't mess, don't, 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 don't mess with the ministry I'm working on right now. And he tells me that a lot. Listen to this, saints. Life challenges, challenging obstacles can cause us to be, feel overwhelmed with heartache, sadness, and despair. During these challenging experiences in our lives, it is vital that we draw, draw close to God so that he will draw close to us. I walk through those doors to know that I am with God. Not now. When I'm, when I'm into something, I don't understand. I'm in it because of God. Why? Because I show my commitment when I do understand. Although you face troubles, remember that God, our Heavenly Father, 
all knowing Father, knew what you would encounter before the foundation of the earth were ever laid. When he said, let, <laughs> let us make man, when he said, let there be light, guess what? He already knew the Maurice Robinson in the year 2016, 2007, 1999, was going to be on drugs. He already knew it. Before the foundation of the world. He knew, he, wherever you are sinning, don't think God just came up with it. Oh, I'm sorry. We don't want to give God that much credit. We just came up with it. He just told you. Although you face troubles, remember God, our Heavenly Father, all-knowing, knew what you would encounter before the foundation of the earth. Have a seat, there. Thank you for coming, bro. The unpleasant, life-changing experience you face might have been a shock to you, but God knew about that before he created you, and he already set up an eternal and set up an internal encouragement system. Set up an internal encouragement system. An internal encouragement system. What's going on? Okay. Set up an internal encouragement system. Anybody know what that means? An internal encouragement system. My trouble that I'm going through there should be something in you to help me get through it. Your troubles that you're going through, there should be something in me to help you get through it, if I know God. How long, saints? Imagine if we all looked out for each other for real, for real. Wouldn't none of us have to worry about nothing. But I already see it. Somebody gonna be expecting me to do what I did yesterday. Well, he did it for her. I didn't do it, saints. Hello? It said an internal encouragement system within you to assist during the uh, difficult times when you accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. So y'all know what's going on? Everybody wants salvation, but don't, nobody wants God to be their Lord. Everybody wants God, Jesus to save them, but nobody wants Jesus the Lord over them. Because if, if Jesus is my Lord, guess what? I'm going to do my best to make sure you're, you're all right in difficult times. You don't ignore a person when they're in agony and you tell them you love them. Always got a reason. Always got an excuse. Always got a way out. And it ain't a way God gave you out because you ain't making the other person feel what? Better. Love others more than you love your what? Always make others feel better because you know you have the love of who? God. I promise you. You're going to need the love of God. The more spiritual you become, the more you're going to need the love of God. See, I'm all right with, 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 with being a Christian because as a Christian, when I mess up, I can repent. Baby, they don't repent in heaven. You keep running around here repenting. You know what's going to happen? God's going to catch you. He God. He's going to catch you in a place, and he said, well, this is one of my repentance. I can't let them, if they keep repenting, keep practicing repenting, keep practicing repenting. You know what happens? God catch you in a place where you're going to need something, and he'll take you out before you have a chance to repent. So now what happens? I got to go to hell for a day. Because I messed around and I couldn't what? I couldn't repent. I couldn't repent. When you become spiritual, you put all trust in God. Whatever happens in my life, God, God spoke it. Nothing happens on this earth without God's permission. Nothing happens on this earth without God speaking. So if, if, if you want, if God is speaking foolishness into your life, you better make sure 
you're in love with God and you're on his purpose. I walked these streets as an addict for years. Now, in hindsight, I see it was, it was preparation for this. So I could relate to people who are in places where they don't want to be. Don't nobody want to be on drugs. Don't nobody want to be sick. Don't nobody want to be homeless. But because you got, you can't relate. Like you ain't never been there. Because you ain't got no compassion. You getting yours, so so you know what? I, 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 got, I got mine on the grind, get yours on the grind. Just like I had to get mine. Baby, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You ain't get yours by yourself. There was an angel that God put in your life to make your life better. And then you turn your back on the angel. You take the angels for granted. In the scripture, David experienced a devastating, overwhelming event. David returned home with his men only to find that the Am Am Amalekites raided and burned in his land with fire and took captive the women and children. David and the people, were, people who were with him wept until they were exhausted, too exhausted to weep anymore. And the people with David spoke of stoning him. Now, this is the hero. It's David. They followed David to fight. And David had a band. About 600 men. It wasn't enough for them to go fight 30,000 men. It wasn't enough for them to go fight 15,000 men. It wasn't nothing for the men that were following David to go fight a whole lot of men. But now, when, 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 when something happened to what they loved more than David, they might have been strong David. They might have killed David. And this is what happens with us with God. When we, when we put people in places where God should be, He allows us. He'll, he, he, will, he will allow them to hurt us to show us that they're not God. They're not Him. They're not going to be faithful until they, until they learn to study Him and stop, stop studying the Bible and studying Jesus. Jesus said, no longer do you have to, no longer do I have to go to Father on your behalf. You are a spirit now that can go to him directly for yourself. Watch what they did. He said they were too exhausted to weep, and the, and, and the people with David spoke of stoning him. Everyone was affected in distress, but God came through in timely encouragement. That's what love does it gives encouragement when encouragement is what needed? I don't need you making me happy when I'm already happy. You don't need me making you happy when you're already happy. You don't need me giving you food when you ain't hungry. Huh? Food is timely when a brother's hungry. I ain't making no sense. I'm just yelling. And it says, everyone was affected in distress, but God came through with timely, timely encouragement. Now watch this. God is what? Love. And love is what? God. Now watch this. Everyone was affected and in distress, but love came through. Huh? With timely encouragement. Huh? Huh? People are going to do what people do. Jesus told them, I don't deal with, they do it good right now, but I know what's in a man. I know what's in man. And if, and, and if it ain't all God, it's just a matter of time. Listen to this. David, remember, David had a relationship with God. David was a worshiper and a man after God's own heart. It wasn't David. David lost his family too. David wasn't trying to stone nobody because he knew God was working in a way that what? They did not what? Under what? 
Come on, somebody. Do y'all really think people don't, when people who are walking with God don't know what you're doing? But that's why God said, can I trust you? Because God, when God reveals something to you, he said, don't get in the way of me working on them like I had to take time to what? Work on you. I'm letting you know this so you can help them get through this. But it ain't easy. The closer you get to God, the more you see faith and ungenuine love. I'm not aiming at nobody. I'm just trying to help all of us. Because this is hitting me too. Notice what it says. So even in the midst of distress, this is David, man after God's own heart. Even in the midst of distress, the scripture states that David felt strength and encouragement in the Lord, his God, and sought God's direction regarding his troubles, and David recovered all that the enemy had stolen from him. Oh, I remember the time when, 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 I, when the man made me the pastor of the church and I was still getting high and I told him I didn't want to be the pastor. He told me God told me to make me the pastor. And then when one of the episodes happened on a Monday night and I both been in church and I wasn't in church. And guess what? I didn't go to church Thursday. I came and took no medicine. Because it was not, I was in love with, I was not in love with looking like a bishop. I was in love with God. Not in love with looking like a husband. I'm in love with God. I'm, in, I'm not in love with looking like a good church member. I'm in love with God. Because if I was in love with being a bishop, shame would have kept me out of here. If I was in love with being a good church member, shame would have kept me out of here. But because I, my love for God is greater than any shame or guilt, I walked through the doors that Thursday. And I'm standing here today. Telling you I did it. And, and you already knew. Do y'all understand what's going on here? God said, I'm going to see if you're really in love with me or you're in love with what you look like. Are you really in love with me or you're in love with what you look like? The closer you get to God, the more you're going to run into people who are concerned about looking like they love you. And they'll act like it around other folk. But when me and Richard get one-on-one -on -one these days, I know he ain't playing. There was a time I looked at Richard with one-on-one. -on -one. I, I started looking at my watch and say, okay, 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay. Miss, can I get to know? I just capped out because I knew it was coming. Because he had an agenda. Yes. And he would tell on y'all, but it cost so dog much for him to take. He had an agenda. Now he's telling y'all that he don't eat chocolate. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. <laughs> So in the midst of the distress, the scripture states, David felt strengthened and encouraged in the Lord his God and sought God's direction regarding his troubles, and David recovered all that the enemy stole from him. Wow. I look at my, I look at my life in 2000. 2003, 2004, when I owned an $85,000 two-seater Cadillac. But the day I got my, my name on a title to a church, y'all, Maurice Robinson, name on a title. I done had so many divorces, I couldn't even get a title. Only way my name got a title or, or got, got, on, got on the deed of the house, and my, my, my wife had to get the credit. That ain't, that don't happen no more. Not only if I get, if I get a, 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 a title to a church, I can even Clearly, you know, I can get a title to a house. All because of who? Because I didn't let shame push me away in, in showing that I love him more than I, more than I am, am embarrassed to be around you because I walk through them doors and I know whatever happens in my life, I know God is orchestrating. Whatever it is, 
Be at peace with it. If God put you in the boat, guess what? Huh? When he put them in, when Jesus told them, get in the boat, I'll meet you on the other side of the river. And when the storm came, they forgot what he said. He said, I'll meet you on the other side of the river. So no matter what, what the storm did, he, they were going to make it to the other side of the river. If God put you in this thing called life, he said, keep your, he said, let there be light so you can see me do the life that, that you are living. Life is the battleground. Life has darkness in it. That's why he said, let there be light. Now notice what happens here. After David encouraged himself in who? In God. When I was in the hospital two weeks ago, and, and, and this thing had me so down and I couldn't even stand up for five seconds without, without gasping for air. And I, and, and, and I didn't know where to go or what to do. I said, you know what, Lord? Faith is going to get me through this. That's all I got right now. And they ain't what the doctor's gonna do, it ain't what the medicine's gonna do. Faith's gonna get me through this. And then after I said that, y'all know what? Know what I did? I went to sleep. I couldn't even sleep because of the pain. But once I said, faith gonna get me through this, I went to sleep. And I went to sleep any time I wanted to. Because there was no more regard for pain. There was no more regard for life. There was no more thinking, well, you're going to die this time. You didn't care. However faith decided to do it, I was all right because I know God cannot be unfaithful. Because of his love. Notice what it says here. You probably experienced a situation similar to this. When your step were ordered to return to a place and everything was totally out of control, Individuals connected to you were negatively impacted, and their actions and words indicated that they wanted to get rid of you. Sound like the time I was here, Spirit of Jesus. Huh? But God gave us a plan. God gave us a plan. Let this be encouragement to you that no matter the situation you're facing or have faced, Allow God's encouragement to system, encouragement system to kick in. The Holy His encouragement system is the Holy Spirit. Now, we know God. We know Jesus. Who is the Holy Spirit? Huh? I know what the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is the holiness of God. Look, if I talked about you. I sure talked about, I said, girl, she ain't sure, but she knows she got my $50. I sure talked about you. I, I ain't going to lie. I, ain't, I am not going to lie. Did I talk about it? Y'all did not talk about it. I sure did. I said, I, I, she got, no, she got my $50, but she ain't going to show up. I should have known, brother. You would never do your bishop like that, ever. But you, you forgive me? You forgive me? Yeah. All right, girl, I forgive you for being late. And maybe you give me a chance to talk about you. <laughs> What's it? So it said, let this encouragement in you, let this be encouragement to you that no matter the situation you're facing or have faced, allow God to encourage the system to kick in. Now here we come with the love. Now y'all finna find out what love is. Now you finna find out what love is. See, did you will? Huh? That's the Holy Spirit. See my wife? That's the Holy Spirit. See, Missionary One Tears, Holy Spirit. Y'all heard her pray? Holy Spirit. Deacon Rap, everybody in him. You have the avail to be God is God, Jesus is Jesus, and the third leg of the element is us, the Holy Spirit. You know how the Holy Spirit, you know how the Holy Spirit works? It says it will bring you into re the remembrance of what all things. You know what it said? And what is the only thing that matters when I'm in a difficult place? That God, you will remind me that God loves me. Where you going, man? Because I know I might not see you for two weeks. You good? Hey, baby. Shoot, so. You know what? You know what? You so. Come here. Come here. Come here, sir. Come here. Don't you, don't you, and don't you, and don't. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah. You tell, come here, come here, come here. Tell your mom to take your mic down, okay? 
Huh? All right, get y'all some french fries. All right, baby? Okay? You tell us. Your mama, Bishop, say, get us some french fries. Praise the Lord. Yeah, well, yeah, they wouldn't say, say, I'm the one who went up there, and I'm the one got it. So I, I, it's all about me right now. That's right, baby. You ain't wrong. So y'all hear this? So now, what I must do, he said, the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth and lead you out of your difficult situation. You are to be the third leg, the Holy God, stop me right now, please. Guide me in the altar that no matter what I have done, God still what? Love me. And then he will give me a plan to help you come out your difficult situation by giving you what you don't expect. Encouragement in, at a timely, uh, timely encouragement. Timely encouragement. You like this? You hear this? You see what I'm saying? You are that Holy Spirit. God is the first leg. Jesus is the second leg. And we are the third leg. We are God and Jesus. The holiness of God and the spirit of Jesus. That's us. When we become totally spiritual. Are we talking about anything, saints? Amen. Amen. And that's what love is. Love never discourages. Christians will, but not the Spirit of God. Because Christians don't count your rights and your wrongs to see if they need to deal with you. But the Spirit of love ain't going to do that. Christians will. The Bible never said you're created in the image of the Bible. Never said you're created in the image of Christian. He said you're created in the image of God, and God is a spirit. At some point, we got to start studying God. You're, you're never going to come out of what you're out of because what you're in, God put you in to realize at some point I'm your only hope. Study me. And I'll teach you how to, how to exhibit a, a spirit of holiness and to the, how to live and, 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 and hold it in the spirit of love. But it's going to become painful. Because when you, when, you, when you become the Holy Spirit and you know you're in the awareness that you are that Holy Spirit, you see your users. You see those that are taking advantage of you. You see those that are pretending, pre pretending to love you. And it ain't, and it's painful. But guess what? God tell you, don't you say a word, because I'm working on them just like I took time to work on you. Anybody feeling this tonight? Amen. Maybe I'm wasting my voice. I just wanted to talk about, because we are, we are growing in the spirit, but I'm seeing people getting left behind because they don't understand the spirit that we're supposed to be growing in is the spirit of love. We're supposed to be growing in the image of God. God is love, so we should be the image of what? Love at all times. So in other words, when somebody see you, they're supposed to say, imagine love coming. Hey, come Bishop, imagine it's got to be the love coming because he, he's in his image. So every time you imagine Bishop, you imagine either a lover, a lover, or a sucker. According to what, what, what dynamic you're in in your life. Mr. Irma just laugh because she said, they, you're, the, you're the lollipop, Bishop. You're the lollipop. <laughs> but if people can't use me, God can't use me. Use is used. Hello, somebody. Notice what it says. It says, God, let this be encouragement to you that no matter the situation you're facing or have faced, allow God's encouragement to kick in the Holy Spirit and inquire of him at all times regarding the, regarding the route of divine recovery. God comes through on time for you. For you. You know what on time is? It's your due season. It's your due season. 
It's your due season. In other words, it's time for us to walk in the spirit, accept the pain, huh? Not looking for worldly gain or a heavenly reward. Hello, somebody. It's our due season. It's our, we are a spirit-based church, not a Bible-based church. Y'all all right? Amen. Now, don't you look at love a little bit different now? I'm supposed to always encourage, and love really factors in when I don't want to encourage because you're not encouraging me. Hard, man. Hard. Ain't nobody concerned about how you doing, but you all you get you, but yet you still gotta be concerned about how they do. Ain't that hard? Huh? Nothing like having a man uh 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 with two eggs in the kitchen and, 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 and he'll spend all the rent money, but you gotta you gotta go cook in them eggs and them grits. That's hard, ain't it? Huh? Huh? That's hard. Huh? You gonna do it? Oh, so you're you're glad to give it to him then. See that? But y'all understand the point I'm making? Amen. Do y'all know when Jesus, when God when Adam and Eve chose Lucifer over him? That's when he proved his love for us by not destroying them. By letting them live. Because you understand why Lucifer, you, anybody know why Lucifer did that? Huh? He was tempting God to become him. Because he knew that Adam and Eve was his prize. God, this is so good. I'm going to preach this. So he knew Adam and Eve was his prize. And he said, I can get to them. He'll kill them. And if he killed them, now he'll be just like me. Y'all see that? Huh? So he gonna tell, if he think he can try God, you don't think he, 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 don't think he, think he can try you? He tried God. He, he wanted God to just wipe him out. Forget about the plan. Because if God had killed Adam and Eve, there would not be no more man. Because we would have been under, under our notion of, 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 of the serpent rather than our heavenly father. And, and y'all got to realize something. When you read the lost books of the Bible, you let them have heard it. Guess what Adam, the servant, the whole plan was? I got to get rid of Adam. I got to get rid of Adam. I got to get This whole thing was to kill Adam. But God didn't, he never killed Adam. Can I help, can I help you out? The devil ain't never killed no man. God has allowed us to leave here to bullet wounds and people getting shot and, and, and people being, being smothered. But 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 no 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 no. The devil didn't kill nobody. He takes he tries to take credit for it. He tries to take credit for it. But God knew he, he knew he just told us, he just told us it says it says something about even before the beginning of the earth. He know how you're gonna leave him. So you sitting here worried about how you're going to die. Baby, God already know it. He ain't going to change it because you worried about it. Huh? I am so blessed. I tell my wife every morning that I got a chance to, to, to live with the woman that I fell in love with at seven years old. So no matter what she go through, I deal with it. Why? Y'all know why I deal with it? My love is genuine. No matter what, y'all all y'all have seen her go through with me. Why does she go through with me? Because her love is real. And the greatest, the greatest thing I ever heard out, out of my life came out of that little mouth right there. Came out of that little mouth right there. I went out and got high one Saturday night, it was like six, seven years ago. Out of your mouth. And, 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 and then when I came, when I woke up that morning, Sister Mar Mar Marjorie, I got it, I'm working on it, I'm getting it. Sister Marjorie, I'm going to take the V out your name, Isha. <laughs> Isha, you're going to take the R out of my name and call me Marjorie. So I'm going to take the V out of your name. You're Isha now. 
But the greatest thing was, I woke up and God told me, he said, don't tell the church you got high last night. I've been pastoring like four or five years. I said, God, you must be don't want me to pastor no more. He said, go tell them. But what he, was, what he showed me, the work that I had put in on his behalf was real. Because I got up here and I, after I told him, I said, now, nah, I, 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 I made sure I got my last sermon in. I told him I got to preach. I got to be one more sermon. And then I said, y'all, I got to tell y'all something. God told me to do this. I said, last night I went out and got high, blah, 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 blah. And I understand y'all don't want to be y'all pastor no more. And that lady said, she said, Bishop, where are we going to go? She said, we ain't never, these were her words, had nobody love us and teach us like you. So the bottom line is, the bottom line is, what you coming over here for? To see what I got on? See what first lady got on? Huh? See who, who, see who mad at each other? See, see who you can get mad at? <laughs> so, cause let me tell you like this. If you come over here for the living word, you'll never leave. But if you come over here for anything else, you'll consider leaving. But if you come over here for the word, like she said, where we gonna go? She said, ain't nobody ever loved us like you do. I taught us like you do. Did she say that? In other words, what when I was a, when I was ready to take myself out to her, and I'm riding on the right now, and I rolled on it, and when I walked through those doors, when I when I when shame wanted to take over, when guilt wanted to take over, I rolled on those words. She gave me timely encouragement. She gave me timely and see when when you get timely encouragement from God, guess what? It never wears off because it's eternal. Come on, we go. Amen. It's eternal. She gave me timely encouragement. So when it comes to church, y'all can't fool me because I already got my timely encouragement. Where we going? Who going to love us like you? Who going to teach us like you? Who going to nourish us like you? Who going to forgive us like you? Who going to be forbearing of us like you? I'm gonna check you now. Pastor talk, talk, Pastor put that in. When I was talking about the grass and the fence, that, that, that's the pastor rubbing on me. <laughs> she, she said, you know what Pastor told me the other day? She said, you better hope nothing don't happen to you. <laughs> she said, I'm coming y'all right now. I'm, I'm, I got y'all. Pastor told me yesterday. She said, you better hope nothing don't happen to you. She said, I can't. I don't want you to go nowhere, but I can't wait to get to them. I said, I tell you what, I just retired. She said, no, you ain't going to need them to meet by myself. <laughs> so Timely, y'all heard what just happened? Timely encouragement. You got that? We'll get you through those words, two words that got me pastor of this church today. Mr. Cannon said, God told me to make you the pastor of this church. And then when I thought God was going to take me down, when he said, go tell them what you did last night. Y'all know I wouldn't have did it. Because man, man ain't going to tell on himself, he's going to hide. So it had to be God. And what you found out from that day? Anybody know, know what you found out? You found the truth. Because you knew I would lie to you if I told you my other truth. You know, if I tell you my ugly truth, ain't, ain't, ain't nothing else worth I can tell you. At that time, I'm a, I'm a pastor and I'm getting hot. There was nothing, what, 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 what worse did I tell you? Even if I tell you I raped somebody, what worse than that? Y'all understand what I'm saying? When you, tell, when you can confess the worst thing in your life, not God said you totally mine. You totally mine. Don't just do it to prove a point and let God tell you when to do it. Hello, somebody? Amen. God said, now nah, I know you love me more than you love yourself. And because you love me more than you love yourself, I know you'll be a good pastor and love those, those that I put under you more than you love yourself. 
Amen? Amen. I'm going to let y'all get out a little early tonight. But before I go, I, I don't want no, I don't want no, I don't want no, I don't want no churchy answers. If I get a churchy answer, I'm going to start by talking. Start by talking. Let's get out of the night. Love you. Love others. Others. More than you love yourself. That's right. So don't ever let nobody influence you when it comes to love. Love is a one on one relationship with God that you and Him have. Okay? okay? All right? I, and I know you won't. Know how I know? You're still here. Even though your mama's sick and ain't, ain't coming, you still come. Hmm? See what I'm saying? Sister Marjorie! <laughs> my sister! Tell me the Baptiste, would you get out of the Baptiste tonight? <laughs> Did you get anything out of the Baptiste tonight? Yeah. Yeah, 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 your son, I didn't, bapti I didn't baptize your son yesterday, but I, I'm going to baptize him later. One of them. Stop. What'd you get out of the baptize tonight, my son? Even though you're mad at someone, just forgive them for that, that it go, because God, you have to give an account to God. Like I like that. I like that. Anybody just heard? If I love them, I've already forgave them. If I love them, I've already let it go. If I love them, I, am, I will always be forbearing of them. So I don't have to use those words. I just say, hey, come love. Amen. Wrapped up in love is forgiveness. Wrapped up in love is forbearance. So I just say love, and I don't need all that. If I do it and then say it. A lot of people say it and never do it. <laughs> Talk to me, Deacon Ralph. But you get out of the night, Deacon. I know I'm finna preach all night now. <laughs> Talk to me, Deacon Ralph. I got out of it. You, if someone shows you love, and it's real love, you can't do anything but do it back to them. Amen. That's the perfect word. That's the perfect word. But even if, if you have a love of God, if they don't show you love, that's when you get to show that you have a love of God. See, when I give you back the love you gave me, I have a love of you. I have your love to give you back to you. But when you ain't got no love to give me, and I still give you love, it ain't your love I'm giving you. See it? See it? Got it? So I got a love when love ain't, when love ain't coming my way. Dick Richard! Got everything out of everything oh, you said, Bishop. You're stepping all over my feet. I'm going to let y'all out. Y'all better help me. You're stepping all over my feet, Bishop. Okay, now tell, give me a truth. How was I stepping on your feet? Oh, something worse, something worse. I'm going to say it. I speak English. Give me some of the English words I speak. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting that up, bro. Yeah, you know. Because I still have to slow you down until about time with the people on the fence. But they love you, though. You, I, don't know, I don't know what you done did to them. <laughs> I said, Richard, y'all, oh, Christ is. Russell Gilman, and they love him. I, said, I don't understand that. I know why. Because you dropped him out of the store and take him to get their little sodas and stuff. I know, I, I know why. I know why. See, Ralph wasn't with that. Ralph did what I told him to do. You know, take them Negroes to the store. But you mean take them to the store and drop them off by the store? Yeah. <laughs> That's why they put up with you. That's why they put We got there. All the men around the land. All the men around the Jackson, what's going on, man? What did you say to you tonight, Dexter? Stop doing it. Huh? Stop doing it. All right, man, I appreciate you. Appreciate you. We grew up together. Yeah, his little brother made you cry. Because I was a bad quarterback in elementary school. And, and the coach would let his little brother steadily come in. And, 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 and I was a bad, I could throw that, could I slay that thing? 
and, 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 and his little brother, he would let his little brother play quarterback in practice just in case I got hurt, but I would cry. I thought he would get in my job. Because <laughs> Derek can throw that thing too now. He can throw it too now. He was, he was in fifth grade, I was in sixth grade, me and Jack was the same class. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, oh, yeah I, was mad. I was mad, girl. This was my position. Noel! You still love them after they took your, 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 your what they what y'all took from Noel? His ice cream? You still love them, Noel? Huh? He's, what'd he say? Yeah. 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 All right. All right. All right. All right. So, so, yeah. Uh, Emily, what you got out of the night, Emily? You showed me your love because you brought that physical girl. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for showing me your love because you brought that physical. Because I showed her talk about you. Did I talk about it, y'all? Because how is she going to tell me she going to give me, she going to make a donation of $50 tomorrow night and she ain't with him? I said, Richard, where are you? I ain't even asked where Helen was. I was all about Helen tonight. You sure <laughs> So what you got? What you got tonight, baby? What you got tonight, baby? But, um, I kind of wanted to say, like, how you say God may not talk to you more, but He's always on time. Yeah. And, like today, like I just had my day planned out, like I just knew exactly what I wanted to do, and then later on when I got some news about some stuff, it just yeah. So Babies, 
my queens. What's up, Chuckle? Uh huh? You still love me? They said, boy, you know, y'all, y'all, y'all know what she just told me. She talking about, wait, I get you in there. <laughs>